too. This week, I've decided to share with you a little story from college that I'm pretty sure I haven't shared with you yet. This is the story of how I came to be officially credited as an editor for a real life novel. It all began my junior year of college. In the fall, I found the new stomping grounds of this web forum I used to go to when I was in high school. I was screwing around on the internet one day and I happened to find the forum kind of reformed in a new location and I joined back up and they welcomed me back and it was cool. So then, shortly after I had rejoined the web forum, one night there was a guy who posted a thread and he said something about a novel that he had written that he was working on editing. And I said, oh, well, what's your novel about? And it was basically a murder mystery uh, with a serial killer and it was intended to be the first part of this long series. And he said, well, I can send you the first chapter if you'd like to read it. And I said, sure, why the heck not? So I read the first chapter, I offered some editing advice in the way of grammar and also just general style and things. And he was really appreciative of that. And then a few days later, I got a message from him that said, hey, my editor kind of flaked out on me. Would you like to edit the whole thing? The only catch is it has to be done by Halloween, which was like two and a half weeks away. And at first I was kind of like, then he offered to pay me and so I said okay because college students will do a lot of things for money and the opportunity to get credited for editing which was something that I already really enjoy and seemed really primo so he sent me the manuscript in word format if I remember correctly it was somewhere around like 90,000 words as I was getting close to the end of the editing process and the ultimate due date, I received the request from the author, hey, could you finish a couple days early so I can get it off to the publishing service because I'm going away on a little trip. And I looked at my calendar and I saw I had no major academic things going on. So I said, sure, why not? And I thought that Probably the next time I would hear from him would be to discuss the arrangements to get me my payment. But that was not the case. I found out, like a couple days later, from the author that the trip he had gone on was to go see his long distance girlfriend. And that when he got there, after he had spent a ton of money um, to get a hotel room for himself and rent a car and, you know, fly and stuff. She told him that uh, she did not want to see him anymore. We're sitting on web chat and he's saying all these really depressed sounding things and I don't know if he's in conversation with anyone else but I'm basically just trying to talk him through it and like cheer him up, especially because a couple of the things he was saying sounded somewhat potentially suicidal. I was trying to help him avoid options like that. So we're chatting and he says to me, would you like to know something about my book that nobody else knows? And so I said, Okay, now something you need to know about this murder mystery novel is that the serial killer commits his first like eight murders on Christmas Eve when he was like 15 by burning down the orphanage. And so the author says to me, when I was around 15, I was almost going to burn down my house and kill my family on Christmas and if I had done that eight people would have died. I could not make this up even if I tried. 
So, I say something along the lines of, oh, you know, that's really interesting. And then, as soon as it's not suspicious anymore, I type in a BRB and I go and tell my apartment mates what I had just found out. They basically made a lot of jokes about it, like, oh, you know, you didn't give him your address here, did you? Because, you know, you don't want him to come find you and kill you. I was very alarmed. I didn't think that he would come do anything to me since I had just done him this massive service. And because he didn't have money anymore because he had basically blown it all on this girl. The epilogue of the story is that I never even got all of the money that I was promised. I received maybe like, um, like half of it or something and I'm not mad about that um, because he basically had the worst freaking year of life that I think anyone could ever have. He got in a car accident and like broke his hip in the accident and so he couldn't work and he was trying to go to school but I think he could even barely afford school and to like feed himself so like I didn't want to ask him for this money and he was the one who kept saying to me like oh I intend to pay you I will pay you all the money that I owe you it was only a couple hundred dollars later I many months later I thought to look it up on Amazon and it was there, and I could buy it for like $20 in paperback or something. So I wasn't gonna buy it because one, I had already read it. Two, it wasn't really my cup of tea. But I happened to use the look inside function that Amazon has. I had eventually given him my first and last name so I could receive proper editing credit of the type that I could put on my resume, which I haven't. And, um,. My name was as large as his on the title page, <laughs> but that was not something I was expecting at all. So it was a nice surprise. Apparently he's written more books in the series, but I'm not going to tell you the titles or the author uh, because I'm trying to A, protect identity, and B, protect myself. That's my story about how I once edited a novel. In the comments, I want to know, what is one of your weirdest internet interaction experiences that you've had with somebody. Um, this one probably takes the cake for me. And that's it. So, thank you all for watching. I will see you next time with another video. Peace out. Okay, Cupid, you are pretty okay. You've worked for me before, and I'm hopeful that you will again someday. Cause no